Every day in Britain, millions of people from every walk of life head off to their place of work. Locations, jobs, skills and hazards may be very different. And sometimes problems can arise, however seriously employers take the health and well-being of their workers. So who can help keep workers fit and healthy? Occupational health advisors, whether working as part of an in-house department or as an outsourced OH provider, are the ones qualified to watch over the health of workers. They can advise employers on their responsibilities and how to manage risks. But how much does the public know about occupational health? Is it sort of care for people in their homes, um, putting in rails and making sure people have got the provisions they need to look after them? Yeah, hazards at work and things like that. So if you had a problem at work with health or fitness, would you know who to go to? Probably the health and safety officer, I'd say. Yeah, or HR department. Not where I work, no. small office. So. If I was ill and sick and out, go to the doctor, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd uh, speak to Sins Advice Bureau. The hospital, if it was serious, other than that, we'd look after ourselves. Anyone in your family or friends ever made use of an occupational health department that you know of? Not that I know of. I haven't, but I know several colleagues have used it. They had the counselling side of it. It does seem there's some confusion. So how should an occupational health service work? And what happens in practice? Most healthcare professionals are focused on the employee or the patient, whereas we're providing a service to the employer and the employee. I think our main advantage is that we are actually walking our talk. We're actually in the workplace. We can actually see exactly where the person works, what kind of, say, manual handling tasks they have to do or chemicals that they're working with, and also have an understanding of the relationships within the working environments between their supervisors, managers, colleagues, and how people feel about working. If we look at the story of one employee, we can see how occupational health works in practice. Joe was a, a, a lovely worker, a really good guy, very hard working, and uh, unfortunately um, de started developing some dermatitis, which really looked like it was very much linked to the uh, nickel. Um, use that he was uh, exposed to in the work environment. People are very worried about job security so what, what tends to happen is people, if people have sort of minor symptoms and think it may be related to the job don't always actually want to report it. It was Joe's line manager who spotted the dermatitis had returned and told him to go to see his GP. Initially the problem was treated successfully but when another severe episode occurred the doctor's advice was that Joe should look for another job. Well, obviously, you know, Joe was devastated. He'd been working there for a number of years. Uh, he was good at his job. He'd got used to all the people. And obviously, you know, with work comes a, the social interactions as well. So he was uh, devastated that we'd have to lose his job. His colleagues were also very upset about it. Um, and together they called in the health and safety executive. The HSE was stating that there should be a much more proactive uh, approach to managing skin problems in the workplace. The occupational health advisor then acted as a bridge liaising between the NHS and Joe's employer. She talked to his GP, wrote letters and referred Joe to a specialist dermatologist who was able to prove the problem was work-related. Even with the best planning and preparation, problems can arise. An employee may consult their own family doctor before considering alternatives such as the occupational health advisor at work. I, I have to rely totally on a patient telling me what they do at work, what their requirements are at work, and I can then relate that back to whatever symptoms they're presenting with, but I have n limited knowledge about what other people do in their work. You can see already we're down a path here of investigation, of detective work, that is well beyond the scope of a normal general practice 10 minute consultation. And this is where occupational health comes, becomes very useful because occupational health make a study of one particular workplace, the risks inherent in that workplace, and they can then provide expert advice as to what those risks are and we can then make the corollary the conclusion that that risk is what is causing that symptom. So how does an employer make the most effective use of working with an occupational health advisor? One of the crucial areas I find with occupational health is using them at the very early stage in recruitment. The small cost that we have just to reassure us that we've got a healthy member of staff is really invaluable.
Occupational health works very well if it's managed well um, and it has to be taken very seriously. Uh, there is no point in being um, sporadic about your approach to it. Consistency is a key, um, so if you're going to do it, commit and commit from the beginning. This all sounds fine, but when every business is watching their budgets very closely, why should employers pay the additional cost of occupational health provision? Health and safety law applies to all employers and the self-employed. The first thing that you must do to prepare a person for their work is to make sure that they've had sufficient information, instruction and training about their work role and understand the risks that uh, may affect their health. Although a job contains risks, this doesn't mean they can't be overcome. Uh, sometimes uh, our members are suspicious of occupational health. We will often initiate the suggestion ourselves as union representatives that going to request an occupational health uh, referral would be a good idea for our members. They're sometimes a little bit apprehensive. Uh, they think that it's going to mean that they're going to be told they can't do their job uh, or they're going to get the sack or something of that nature. They want to find out what your problem is and then they work to find the solutions and that's what it's all about. It's what can be recommended to your employer and to you individually about what you can do to make it possible for you to carry on doing your job or to look at alternatives within your workplace uh, and to find solutions to the problems you're facing. So good occupational health is a result of the combined efforts of employer, employee and the health professionals. It's important for the safety advisor to liaise with the other safety professionals, particularly the occupational health advisors. Whereas the safety professional is looking at the hazards and risks in the workplace, such as the, the work environment, uh, equipment or processes, the occupational health advisor is actually looking at the people and assessing the effect that that's having on the people. So it's actually a, a joint effort. And that is where we get the phrase health and safety. And they are two distinctly different things. Often an employer will say, mm, we have paid for this through our POAE, through our national insurance. And what I say to the employer is, well, you are using employees from the community and we're all paying into community care, social benefits, uh, the NHS treatment services, but the workplace is the responsibility of the employer. So it's, it's actually a good investment to look after their employees. I feel that there's a benefit to the country in using occupational health because we're constantly monitoring the employees. We often see and can identify problems at, at an early stage. Uh, examples that we've seen are members of staff with high blood pressure where it's been picked up on a routine uh, monitoring and they've been able to go to their doctor and get treatment before it became a serious health issue. So uh, absolutely there's, there's money to be saved for the country. As a business I'm very happy to pay for occupational health. Um, yes there is a cost involved but when you look at the money that it can save us through absenteeism, um, defending litigation if that's ever the case uh, and just through um, I think having a moral responsibility to our employees to make sure that they are health and fit and that the workplace that they're in is a safe one, uh, I think that it more than outweighs the cost. So protecting, preventing and promoting, managing, involving and planning, training, advising and developing, what business, whether large or small, can afford not to make use of the support of an occupational health advisor? But what happened to Joe and his dermatitis? Oh, Joe's great now. Uh, we, he got some protective gloves which have really helped with the problem. He's much more aware of good skin care, how to protect his skin in the workplace and obviously from an occupational health perspective we monitor him quite frequently.